Uh, we'll start with um, Dr. Indramani, who is um, who will be speaking to the students uh, shortly after now. So, Dr. Indramani, uh, earlier in the day, I've spoken, presented a paper, interesting paper, and he told us that uh, you will still have another paper, opportunities in Africa. But yeah. for now, he's going to talk to us for ten minutes on the team and related issues. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Indira Mani. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair and uh, fellow uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm the good day. Since morning, I'm at the high chair. <laughs> so, that's a great honor. But I, was, I had requested the organizers that uh, I should be utilized fully, because I should get opportunity to interact with you. This particular aspect, you know, sustainable mechanization and livestock reform. If you remember my lecture in the morning, then I had You see, lot of land used to remain fallow. Fallow because you cannot cultivate. Cropping intensity was very less. We, we, we were not able to, many times we were able to take one crop in a year. It is because of mechanization, the cropping intensity in many regions reached to two. And in some region, three, we have three cropping seasons. That is called winter, then uh, your rainy season, and then summer season, three, three cropping, uh, uh, system, uh, cropping seasons are there. So in many areas, we have cropping intensity up to 300%. 300% means three crops in a year. And that could become possible only because of mechanization. And then another thing I discussed in the morning, and that's a major problem. Like in other countries, India is also facing problem of distraction of youth from agriculture. because. Agriculture is not remunerative in their mind. It's not remunerative. Many times, the, the farmer's son and daughter, they say that we can open a tea stall somewhere rather than doing agriculture. Because in tea stall, every day in evening when he comes to home, he has some money in the pocket. But for farmer's son and daughter, they have to wait for six months, four months, and then only. So this is one. And second is it, is, it has become arduous job. So government of India took this in a very big way. First thing, we gave a call that we have to double the farmer's income by 2022. Means this is now 2019. By 2022, there is a promise that that year we will be completing 75 years of our independence. So at the time of 75 years of our independence, the slogan of the nation is that we have to double the farmer's income. And for that, many programs have come. I would like to, to, to through this uh, forum, this message should go to the government that until unless the government bill is not there, government planning is not there, there should be innovation in implementing the things. There should be innovation in addressing the issue of mechanization and issue of agriculture as a whole. So seven, eight programs have been implemented, Chairman Sir, and out of that, one is strong, strong, you know, effort on mechanization. Morning, I made a mention about there is central sector scheme. Farmers are getting up to 50% of subsidy on each implement. And then there is an effort to have 
a special grant if you, you are making self help group self help group then you will be given a special grant to purchase equipment and run a custom hiring center so that way you are basically providing machinery to the needy farmers at the same time it is creating employment also employment in the village area only so that is another scheme that custom hiring centers are being encouraged subsidy and custom hiring centers th these two are major major activity in some cases up to 80 percent subsidy is there if young youths are coming to take up this job of custom hiring because we feel that owning farm uh, owning farm machinery is not the solution your farm size uh, uh, you know 80 percent of india's uh, farmers are marginally small margin less than two hectare so if less than two hectare 80 percent farmer so we we are encouraging do not go for ownership of machine you go for custom hiring take it like if if a car rental car is available there no there is no need to purchase car so uberization of mechanization so that is the call given by given by india uberization of mechanization that is going on then to increase the farmers income there's other some schemes are there soil health card this is one problem big bay it has been taken by government that whole area of the country is being issued soil health card by testing so that as per the requirement only you should apply fertilizer because otherwise there is there is you know there is no control so the thing that that we have taken then another aspect is in a per drop more crop each farm field should get irrigation that is one commitment so big program is going on a separate water ministry has been created that irrigate the area because i told you in the morning 60 percent of area is still on dry land agriculture so it depends upon rain god you know mercy of rain god so that is not that is not having a saved irrigation that is another effort we are making so what is there what we are planning that irrigation mechanization and food production they have big nexus and they should be addressed simultaneously so this one effort is going on then on the other side output side large scale value addition programs have come with again government government help is coming with technological support from the institution so a hub have been created morning there was a mention of tomato by our friend from Megill. idea is that we are also encouraging cluster of you know cluster so it's a tomato cluster then there will be even carrot cluster potato cluster so cluster should be created so large many farmers should join and produce same produce so that they can take you know they can have control on the market so if you are, you are producing in a small small it is very difficult to have control on the market so there is a, there is an example chairman sir that one group of uh, farmers near Delhi, they are growing carrot in 600 hectare. 600 hectare and Delhi market carrot price, they open. It is farmers group which open, they, they, they declare that this will be the carrot price today. Similarly in other crops, baby corn, the fruit crops, so, you know, uh, this kind of clusters are coming. So in cluster based mechanization is also easy because Due to, due to is a small land holding fragmentation, this is difficult. So my, I want to conclude with this, with, with the, uh, this one, uh, with the remark. One, that technological support is necessary from the institution. Manufacturing support is necessary. Local manufacturing must start. That is the second point. Third point, government bill should be there to help all these sectors, farmers and even, even initially manufacturers also to come up and start the program. Then only sustainable mechanization is possible. Like it was said, innovation cannot be transferred. Mechanization also cannot be transferred. That is my will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Indramani. Okay. I think what you is clearly explained. Uh, basically, is included by telling us the need for technology innovations, manufacturing, and government help and support. That, that is very important. I know in Nigeria, one of the problems you have had in manufacturing is that um, 
the basic um, uh, iron and steel is not fully developed. I think the government is now trying to resuscitate uh, Jakusa iron and steel for manufacturing uh, because without manufacturing the reasons we cannot go further. Uh, some of the equipment we have developed, we cannot commercialize. And even as it is now, many of um, the, the iron we, we use, they are still imported. You know, if, I, if iron and steel in, in, in is developed properly, uh, I think it's something that um, we should be able to. And unfortunately also, we used to have Fiat in Kano in those days, Steer in Bauchi, uh, yeah, in, and in Ibadan too, so, but they are comatose. So <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, so we have issues we need to actually address. Uh, why thanking Dr. Mani? I will go to the next speaker, a lady, um, Professor Sunde, to talk on the subject matter of innovations and technologies for sustainable mechanization. Let's put our hands together for Prof. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't think there is much to say about innovation and technology, the importance of innovation and technology in agriculture. Uh, what we need to do really here is we have to encourage our youth to go into agriculture. And for that, we have to show them how cool agriculture could be. Because of the old age equipment and um, tools we are using, the youths are not attracted to agriculture at all. But we have to show them there are different ways we can make agriculture look cool and make agriculture cool. Yes, innovation is very important. We can also you know, adapt some technologies which have been in use in developed countries. Recently, I watched a podcast, BBC podcast, a hydrophonic farm in Abuja, in the city of Abuja. She is using uh, used containers to produce green leafy vegetables. I know that can make a lot of money in Abuja. That's agriculture. But looking at this, it's a cool agriculture. You don't well stain your hands with soil and things like that. Using hydrophonic technology, bring it to Nigeria, bring it to Africa, in a place especially where there are no lands. You know, simply use just so many available, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, used containers and produce your leafy vegetables and make your money. So I believe it's very important we encourage the youth. Uh, I called my colleagues who are coming from MENA, as, as you arrived and so on, because I was excited when I learned that uh, Niji Lucas is talking to the students, you know, to the young ones. It is them we have to push on. They have a lot of ideas. They have a lot of innovation in their heads. Recently, we had a small competition for the youth, and most of the ideas they are bringing is how to bring the farmers and the consumers together in different ways, using information and communication technology. So, honestly, what I want to stress here is let's encourage our youth. Uh, because maybe because I'm a lecturer, that's why I'm feeling this way. Let's give them opportunity to think, to think information, to think technology, to think innovation in agriculture. There are other ideas which they brought, how to improve you know, animal husbandry, just a simple uh, broiler production. How can they improve fish production, for example? Someone came with an idea that he can test the water, the quality of water, and so on, use the technology he has, the technology he know can um, advise farmers, fish farmers. We have a number of fish farmers now, but they don't know really the, uh, the importance of quality, water, quality of water and so on. So what I want to stress here really is just for us to encourage the youth. I want to also give example from my own house. I have two children. Um, one of my son, my son wanted to study medicine, but he couldn't make it. He finished, immediately he finished, he was opportune to be trained by GRZ to be a consultant. And he happened to be in agricultural area in value.
can now see from what I this morning, uh, there is a different culture for engineers, especially agricultural engineers. Uh, and I really love it. The culture is that they are not static. They are always moving. They don't want to sit down. And they are always interacting. And so is, and when we now look at the idea of having an institution, Nigeria Institution of Agricultural Engineers, then one will just throw his mind back to the days of uh, K.O. Mbadiwe that moved from Man of Timber and Caliber, Caterpillar and Bulldozer, and then later he said, I'm a juggernaut, and then he said, I'm now an institution. I cannot be pushed around. <laughs> so Nigeria Institution of Agricultural Engineers cannot be pushed around. Thank you. Um, well, the Federation of Agricultural Commodity Associations of Nigeria is an umbrella body and the apex body for all agricultural commodity associations in the country. And we have still counting about 50 agricultural commodity associations under the big umbrella. The association was formed by the federal government and um, it was to be a voice for all agricultural commodity associations in the country. Uh, we manage the commodity associations. We also make sure we organize them to make sure that they live to the expectations that is required in the present day. Uh, we were fortunate because I think you said when they were having their programs, realized that uh, they couldn't measure the way the fund they put into agriculture is being measured. I mean, they couldn't measure the fund they put into agriculture. And um, because some people will just come and say, okay, we have organized some farmers in Kutuwenji, and we have trained them, and we have shown them so, 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 to apply this uh, technology. Some will say in uh, New Busa, some in uh, Calabar or Ugoja and so on. So when they found out that uh, there was no way to measure the extent of the funds they put in, they now decided that they came across Pakan and looked at our structure and our platform and decided to use the platform and decided that any fund they are going to put into agriculture Pakan must be involved. We are built along the value chain. We have producers, we have processors, and we also have marketers in the value chain. And we are happy that uh, NA, NIAE has been able to locate us because we also are, we have been looking for someone who will be able to take us to the next level. And as far as agricultural development or growth is concerned in this country, and even in sustainability, I believe NIAE is the bedrock. <laughs> Nigeria is faced with a lot of difficulties, and we need to feed the increasing population. Apart from feeding the increasing population, we have a lot of pressures from outside. We have been having meetings, delegations from China, from Turkey, all over the world, trying to see how Nigeria will provide food for them. We have not been able to feed ourselves properly, and we also have these mounting pressures every day. At least in the last one month, I have been opportune to be in different fora, about 12, and we've been having requests coming to us uh, on the need, on, on, on what produce some of these countries we need from Nigeria. So I think it is high time that uh, we have a collaboration 
with NIAE. Because if we don't have that, there is no way we can increase our food production in the country. It is lamentable to hear that uh, Niji Lucas produce uh, flash dryers, and instead of the flash dryers to be used in the country, it's been taken abroad to foreign countries. And we need the flash dryers here. It's originated from here. Why are we not using it here? Uh, we have adaptability, and we need to have homegrown technologies in agricultural mechanization. And I would rather suggest that uh, there may be need for NAIE, NIE, or NIAE to be more practical because we definitely have to go into commercial agriculture if we have to feed ourselves and increase our food production. There may be need for us to move out of our shelves, visit some farms, look at the problems that the farmers are facing, look at the pro problems that the processors are facing, and provide local solutions for this problem. I have the opportunity to visit China some times ago, and what I saw in China was very, very impressive. This hydroponics, they use bamboo for hydroponics, and they told us that, oh, look, we now have uh, green houses that initially were importing green houses from Europe, but we discovered that we are wasting a lot of money. We then told our manufacturers that, look, go and produce greenhouses with very, very cheap materials that will be affordable to the farmers. It may not last for more than one, one year or at most two years. But after the farmers have adapted to the technology, they now told the manufacturers that please increase the quality of this product. They increase the quality, and if you go to China, you just find greenhouses almost everywhere. That's the type of things we require from NIAE. Uh, another issue is the role of, I mean, the issue of policies, which is also related to what my brother Nije Lucas said. And even we were in Incam. We organized a conference in Incam. And we were surprised that even Kwara State Government, they didn't know what is happening in Incam. They didn't know. They didn't know. Some of them came there for the first time and they were shocked. And even in Nigeria, most people did not know what is going on there. So I think, uh, and um, I met the BOI, and I told them, when they were importing uh, machines from abroad, they said, okay, if we want to give you a loan, we are going to import so 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 machine from and pay for it. I said, ah, why can't you go to income? Go there and see what is there. Try and encourage the institution. So we need a policy to be fashioned by the government. And the government will not do it except the private sector fight for it. And that's why there is need for collaboration among the organized private sector to push for policies that will encourage local production of technolo technologies and to even implement, because it's not only agreeing on the policy, but even imp implementation of the policies we have to do something about it. Um, again, we have to look at the issue of, uh, I was discussing with the president about uh, the special agro-processing zones. I don't know how far 
NIAE has been able to get involved. And if African Development Bank is pushing in $4 billion and the institution is not part of it, then it means we are not doing anything. FACAN has been able to convince African Development Bank that we want to occupy the downstream sector of the SAPZs. And uh, uh, F AFDB has agreed. And we will need NIAE to fashion out areas of intervention that we make the SAPZ function properly. We had a meeting with the Minister of Water Resources about two weeks ago. He, sh he told us that we should come up with uh, a roadmap. And I think the roadmap has been, uh, will be presented today uh, to the Minister of uh, Water Resources. Uh, we are, th our thinking uh, is that if we look at, we may be able to present this to the institution and let's see where you can come in. Uh, we are working on Smarter Pakan. That's how to make Pakan smarter. Uh, we've signed agreement with uh, IBM and they are ready to provide us with uh, the applications as soon as possible. Uh, well, we, I am also thinking that uh, NIA should also be involved in discussions with CBN on the Anchor Borrowers Program, or even NISA, CBN and NISA. Uh, so that the technologies that is produced will be used by the farmers and processors. Well, I think uh, my time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Prince uh, Bakari. Um, because of our time, uh, the next uh, the speaker is the CEO of um, Niji local groups. Those of us who are at the CIGR session six, the post harvest and uh, bar process uh, symposium in IET last year, you recall that we visited Niji Lucas uh, farm in Ilero and uh, we saw a lot of fantastic things going on there. Uh, larger tray of land for cassava production uh, processing of cassava into gari, fufu, and the rest. Is there live and direct? So I want to invite him to talk to us briefly. Please welcome uh, Mr. Niji Lucas for his presentation. Uh, good evening, everyone. So permit me to stand on the system protocols. For if as you start greeting all the professors now, the time will go. So, <laughs> so I'll be brief because I'm still leaving this night. So my name is Kola Adeniji, but I'd like to introduce myself as Farmer Kola Adeniji because a lot of medical doctors, they say doctor, engineers, but uh, why is it that? When you are a farmer, you are not proud of your profession. So I'm Farmer Kola Adeniji. So, <laughs> so I like my uh, brother, my father, the way he said it. Policies are not too good. What I've actually suffered for the past almost 30 years in Nigeria, I set up most of the eateries in Nigeria, fast food, during the fast food, uh, fast food era. Then when it comes to area of uh, industrial spare parts for most of the multinationals, like Guinness, like USC Food, like Cadbury, I, provide, I provided all, most of the major parts they were using by making use of the local material. And it works. It works even, it even works better. So when we are talking about uh, NIAE, 
I think uh, a lot of research uh, centers, they have been taking a lot of advantage. And I'm happy that you are waking up now. Because without you in Nigeria, we are going nowhere. So I was, as I was saying during my word, the, the market in Africa market alone on processing equipment is billions. Is billions. I have a, I just installed automated uh, modular starch line now. Nestle has been on my neck for more than almost five years. Finish your this thing, we, are, we need almost five billion worth of starch and flour every year. So one company came to me, was in the last month, he said, Niji, please, what can you do for him? I said, what? He said, I import over 600 metric tons of corn flour to Nigeria every month. He says that you cannot have anybody to set up a corn flour factory in Nigeria when you have a lot of corn. None that is working. Look at the opportunities. When I was talking to students, I, say, I, said, I told them that in Nigeria, where we are, are still having a lot of emerging economy, and we say we have unemployment of youth, that means we don't know what we are doing. Because we still have a lot of areas untouched. We still have a lot of things untapped. And we have more than enough land, rich agricultural land we are not using. All of us, we want to stay in Abuja, we want to stay in the city, we are deceiving ourselves. Anytime I go to my farm, I don't even pray going back to Lagos again. Because I don't work on anybody in Lagos, but still, I still prefer to stay on the farm. Why well, I see that all the youth and everybody wants to stay in Lagos or want to go abroad, when we have the best, uh, 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 the best uh, 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 country to live and to work. So I think I'm happy the way things have been done. So NIE need to actually reposition and take over all the lost glory. And I've, I've told you that proof of concept is there for you to show. Because if you go to anybody that can do this, I can do this, if they don't see the example, they will not believe. But if you are preaching that you can do something big and be able to do something little, look at landmark we are now. It's just a single person that will be able to put this one on ground and everything is working. And Nigeria, we have all it takes. And we cannot even fix a single problem out of our problem. And we have good people like you that are not showing example that we can do. Please, let us tell the government that they should give NIA a chance to reposition agriculture in Nigeria, please. Both, <laughs> both on food processing and on uh, uh, post-harvest. And like uh, the former professor, the widow that just left, uh, Professor Mike, I was thinking of we can have pro product development centers, which can be under you. Because we have a lot of product, we need to bring out a lot of new products. Some of the processing we have now is the one we met years ago. And the processing we met here, due, due to limitations, that's why they were here. And we've not been able to do anything to revive them or to make them better. We see a living the way things have been done, the food have been processed in the olden days. At times when I was working on odorless fufu, people don't believe, they say, I like eating that fufu because of odor. But when they see that you can actually get fufu without odor, so I can make even billions of money from that fufu alone because a lot of people lo like they love it. So we have a lot of area on tap for even our youth and everything to develop a lot of new products. I was talking to someone when I was in Germany. I stay in one hotel and the people know I'm from Nigeria. They say, Nigeria, we love your food. We love your gusi. We love your okra. We are. And so people love our food in Nigeria like this. Why is it that we can't develop our food? Why is it that we have limitations? We have limitations in one area that when you are preparing your food, nobody likes the way you are preparing it. You want to make a eba. You are turning it, all the sweat and everything are going down. But I'm working on one project like a coffee maker. I want eba. The gari is there. The, the water is there. I press I want one kg of gari. Do you want it soft or hard? It comes out. Everybody will eat. And we'll go back to the farm. You want to eat a amala. The powder is there, the everything is there. And you press the machine, you just mix it together. You want it soft or hard? How many kg do you want? Can't we do that? So when we do that, look at the number of people that will develop to eat our food. So there's a lot of things to be done. So sitting down in the, in the office, it cannot solve the problem. So you need to actually, 50% of people need to come and join people like us on the farm or on the researchers room. I've been researching all my life since I started this job, I spent more than even 200 million on R&D, going to different countries, taking pictures, look at the way things run, look at what I can, what I can improve on it. 
I pick Gary for normal Gary, they are doing like this. I automate, I standardize a cassava processing up the way it was up to now. I spent millions, no support from anybody. No government have been able to su support me for once. If you come to my farm now, I use 15 generators. 350 kV, 250 kV. Now I'm using almost over 5 million diesel every week. By next month, I'll be using almost 10, 10 billion diesel just to process products. I have the biggest cassava farm in Africa. It's over 4,000. I've gotten another 10,000. I'm not working for money. I'm working for people to know that in Africa, some of us know what we are doing. And we can give a legacy project. So if you come and join us, it's not about the money. We've actually created a pathway for other people to come and see that sleeping at home will not solve the problem. I only sleep four hours every day. If I've been sick now for almost two months, I'm still working as I'm, I'm so the doctor have to actually get me in the office for the doctor to visit for almost uh, six hours. Took two drip and seven injection. Because you invited me, I can't, I can't fail not to come. I'm supposed to be in Abuja tomorrow. I'm supposed to be on my farm. So I'm living here immediately now to go and meet some of my people that are on the farm. So and when you look at the number of money some of us spend to make things, things work, a lot of people can't do that. I have over almost 30 security men vigilante. I have to build a police station on the farm. I have to get apartments to the police station there. Yeah. I have to use almost three SPU for me to work between I go to the farm and everything. I'm always on the road. Look at the money I'm spending because, so nothing's coming to my pocket. But what my happiness is that people like you appreciate what I'm doing. And if my first son can whip me and say, Daddy, you say what? I want to be a farmer. So that's the legacy we are praying for. How many, boy, how many sons uh, this can say, you want to go back to the farm? And that's what I'm actually praying for. Let's these people know our kids do the right thing to be done. Not just, I want to go to Canada, I want to go to uh, America. I want, you can go to America when you have something to offer, not when you don't have anything to offer. I was in Germany last uh, three months. They are looking for cassava flour, cassava starch to do disposable pack. They are using cassava flour because it's biodegradable. All the packs and everything they are using, they develop a, a from cassava flour and cassava this, to do biodegradable pack. Last week, someone coming from Jordan, he said he something about me. He said he won a ship load of cassava peels. Ship load of cassava we are peeling to feed the animals and so on. Look at, we are sitting on gold and we don't even know. So thank you. A better round of applause for Niji Lucas. Uh, we'll have time to discuss this. I hope you are noting your comments and your questions. Uh, we quickly move on to the executive director of CBE. Uh, in 2009, yes, CBE, we signed MOU with uh, Asabe, and it's been a good journey. And we are privileged to have the director here in our midst today to talk on ESAB, what we can get vis-a-vis, -vis and also the team. So let's welcome uh, Darren for his. Uh Warren, thank you. Boy, what a uh, what a difficult role though to f to follow a speech after Cola. That is absolutely what uh, modern agriculture is all about. And it would be very easy for me to uh, not talk about it, ASAB activities and, and share thoughts about uh, smart agriculture, where the future is. But I, I didn't want to do that because my, my experience so far uh, in Nigeria has been from the airport to where we stayed and then, then from Lagos to here. So I, I don't know anything about the country but I've traveled enough, and what really inspires me about our profession, several people have said it that aren't connected with ABEs, there is a kindred spirit. There is absolutely something about us that uh, wants to solve problems. We absolutely want to see what we can do to improve and connect things that are done, but we also recognize and need to be reminded that it cannot be prescriptive. It has to be unique, it has to be relevant for the application, for the location, and for the society. So 
Um, but very quickly, uh, since I've had many, many people, many friends come up that uh, have long affiliations with Asabi. Uh, by the way, I will have a tendency to say the letters, but uh, I very much encourage you to say Asabi if, uh, if that is the, uh, the way you like it best. If I don't think about it, I say ASABE, but Asabi is great. Asabi was uh, founded uh, as ASAE in 1907. And so we, at our very core, we're a very American organization. But even from the earliest days, there was an awareness that uh, we want to be sure that we engage and involve the discipline more broadly. And when I read the history, there's been, there was quite a bit of uh, debate about whether we should be rural engineers or whether we should be something tied in with mechanical engineering. And I think it was very good that uh, did not choose that because it would have been fairly limiting. Although urban agriculture, vertical agriculture, agriculture in space, agriculture in any way is something that we definitely want to be engaged with. And then of course, uh, recognition too that uh, biology is very, very important. Our father of ASAE was J.B. Davidson, a professor mechanical engineer by training from Nebraska, but a professor at Iowa State for most of his career. In his early writings, he talked about how we want to take the well-defined engineering principles from those established engineering fields, the mechanicals, the civils, and so on, and apply their organic, their inorganic expertise to organic. Um, I wish it, if he'd only said biological, <laughs> it would have been very different and very easy, but the, the biological has changed. So next slide, please. Um, I was introduced uh, several times. I'm not sure who or how we can control the slides. I was introduced several times uh, as the, uh, the ASAB president, and uh, I graciously uh, accept that, but uh, I I'm not the president. Our, our president uh, is, is elected every year. And our current president is Dr. Sue Noakes. And uh, Sue is a dean at the uh, University of Kentucky. Um, she's a longtime member of the organization. Our immediate past president, who uh, passed the gavel at the uh, Boston annual meeting, is Maury Salts. And our incoming president is Candace or Candy Engler with John Deere. And uh, we have, as an organization, been blessed to be able to have good engagement by the, the private sector, by industry. And so for every year, uh, with, with only one exception, we have able, been able to alternate between private and public sector. Yes, most of those from the public sector are academia, but uh, every third time, every third term that it's public, we will get somebody from the US government, typically USDA. So we, we keep reminding ourselves to use that public sector. This is going to be the first time in our organization's history that we will have back-to-back -back women in, that, in the leadership role. And that is, uh, that is certainly outstanding. So next slide, please. Touching briefly, um, I, I certainly am very, very excited about the opportunities with uh, our longstanding um, agreement and cooperative agreement cooperation with uh, uh, ASABE and NIAE, it is mainly focused on membership. And it's mainly focused on recognition of membership activities. And I mentioned to Florian that we've started to go away from that and, and have more of what we call global engagement agreements, where we can more offer support and activities uh, recognizing that it's not just about numbers and it's very, very difficult and it's very, very important, very, very important that there's strong sister organizations. Other major U.S. organizations, the electrical engineers, the mechanical engineers, the Society of Automotive Engineers, they have become very international and they have tried to take over. That's not ASABE's view. We, we are very, very excited to have those in involved and affiliated from around the world but it's not, it's not our desire to try to take over. We, we recognize that there's just a lot more that can be done by collaborating and cooperating. And so I think that at some point in time, we definitely want to, to visit about uh, what might make more sense with, with that agreement that we've had in place now for 10 years. 
Next slide, please. Okay, part of uh, President Noak's uh, top priorities for her year in office is enabling interconnections. And she is very much interested in, uh, in expanding and building not only on networks that have uh, been in place for some time, but creating new ones. And uh, to that end, she uh, will be very excited to hear what has come out of, uh, of this meeting. Um, she absolutely uh, wants me to, uh, to extend uh, you know, her greetings and, and well wishes. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very pleased to, uh, to go back and uh, if I were to give the early report now, the energy and enthusiasm has been phenomenal. A very significant effort, and uh, Dr. Indramani touched on it several times, when uh, Dr. Lalit Verma was president of ASABE, he launched uh, an initiative called our Global Engagement Initiative, and we had a day-long event in Montreal that really started to set the stage. And part of that initiative was to launch a series of global conferences, and, I, and the, the they have too much ASABE uh, listed on there because the overarching desire of these activities and events isn't to just trumpet ASABE. It is to lift up the profession. It is to offer that, that spark, that motivation, that connection. And in the case of working with the uh, Indian Society, um, the conference ended up netting a surplus. Uh, and the, those of us in the nonprofit in the U.S. are careful, to, we don't say income necessarily, but it ended up having a little income. And, and so uh, that helped, it particularly helped the, uh, the uh, Indian Society's budget. But uh, we launched the uh, first event that was thinking along the global engagement lines with climate, on climate change. And then as we formed the initiative to really hold these activities about the grand challenges and globally, food security, water security, energy security, and so forth, all in the context of sustainability and, and cognizant of climate change, that we held the uh, food security conference in fall of 2016 in Stellenbosch, South Africa. And for me, the, the most interesting part was when a speaker came up and said, thank you, Asabi, for coming to Africa. That, that really you know, we're, we're, we're in Africa, we're all over the world, so for me it was a little bit hard to think that way, but uh, that person went on to say that he has been a member of ASAB for 15 years, and he had never been to a gathering before where there was more than four or five members. And so to be at an event where there was that collective, he really was energized about it. Um, the water security conference was, uh, was outstanding in, uh, in Hyderabad, and several people, uh, I think even in the audience here, were, uh, were at that. And uh, the, the takeaway, this is always a challenge with conferences, is uh, to do more, challenge ourselves to do more than just have a good conference. Now, a good conference is important. If it's not a good conference, it's difficult for good things to continue energy to build and so forth. But it's very easy to leave and remember perhaps the networking or remember the dancing or remember something else about the event. But if we're not able to advance the profession, then we really haven't done enough. And so each one of these events, we, we are challenging ourselves to come up with a short list of, of those goals and those things that ABEs need to do globally. And it's, it's, again, it's not just ASAB, it's not just America. Um, we recognize that some of the, uh, the goals or activities are probably not going to be where every nation is at, uh, you know, from, a, from an agricultural development standpoint. But, uh, but nevertheless, the, uh, the, you know, the critical issues and doing those important things where we make a difference. I, I love the T-shirt, because we are all of the disciplines. That truly is what makes us unique. And that student, that student is everywhere around the world. They say, but when I graduate with this degree, nobody knows who I am. So what? That's a great opportunity. You now have an opportunity to explain to them who you are, why you're different, and why you make, make a big difference. Next slide, please. Okay, the Energy Security Conference will be the third in the theme. Early in the planning, um, plans are for that to be in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, a couple quick items for those that are 
not particularly familiar with ASAB, I apologize, uh, but uh, we have put a lot of energy and resources for the past two years in really in improving our journals. Next slide, please. The uh, an initial step, a little baby step, was that uh, all of our journals now have their own unique web page. And that is something that uh, may seem like nothing, but uh, there's quite a bit to that. And the journal industry globally is now dominated by a handful of commercial publishers. And they do a phenomenal job. They, they have tremendous resources. They are laser focused on making a profit. But I personally believe a bit in my heart that the spirit of what makes journals rich and useful is that they are done by organizations and entities that aren't concerned about the profit, but truly are trying to capture the best research, the best engineering. And yes, the, the, we'll talk about the impact factor in a second. Uh, the impact factor is important in certain places, but what's a lot more important, and we've had this happen, is someone contacts us and said, we have found an error in a journal article. And it was published in 1964, and we really would, that does not help your impact factor, that does not do anything, but we will go back and we'll change that because we recognize that the work is so critical, the work oftentimes stands the test of time. Next slide, please. So part of what uh, we've done too with the journals is uh, there's been a, a perception that uh, the only way you could publish in the Sabi journals is if you had a very lofty, lengthy piece, and that's not the case. And so uh, to, help, uh, to help shorten that or to help uh, describe uh, different types of articles now than just the traditional ones, if you'll back it one second, please, um, the research articles would really be, apologize, go back one slide, please. The research articles would be traditional articles, and uh, these, are, these are lengthy articles that uh, can be in upwards of, of 50 pages. Um, the one just below research articles or review articles, very similar, very similar but shorter in length. Then uh, the next one is uh, research and our real challenge is written, is dense, it's very articulate, it's, uh, captured in a way that it's not to exceed eight pages. So research briefs are, uh, are very, very short. Um, perspectives, this is something very new for us. Um, many, many other organizations do that. Many of the perspectives will be uh, sought after, they'll be invited, but they don't need to be. And the intent here is to really go out and try to get somebody to write and capture and boy, if we could get a perspective from COLA, that really would be the kind of thing that uh, would encourage. He, if, if he were able to write it or someone was able to work with him to sit down and, and tape record about 15 minutes of him, it would be a very impactful paper. The last, the Frontier articles, um, also the intent there is often to be invited, um, but to include things that were typically not covered before like a synopsis or a write-up of a seminar, symposium, or event. And again, covering the kinds of things that go beyond, we had nice food and nice visits, but we also did these things. And here are some items that we're going to uh, continue to work on in the future. Next slide, please. Impact factor, uh, proud of the fact that that has gone way up. Next slide. And the, uh, Time for reviews uh, within the uh, journal articles has uh, dramatically uh, dropped. Uh, next slide. And also, in, a, in our history, we never had an editor-in-chief, and that's something that every organization has had. Gary Fox, uh, department head uh, in the United States at North Carolina State, and Gary welcomes any input. Gary would very much welcome insights and, and ideas from a Nigerian perspective as to collaboration and working together. Okay, next slide. We uh, recently have expanded our capacity in the uh, social media area. So we are working aggressively to, to do more tweeting, to do more posting, and, and to do things that are, that are all social media. Next slide. Another major emphasis of, uh, of President Sue Noakes uh, tied in with code of conduct and awareness that uh, we absolutely um, want to be more embracing we want to recognize that uh, 
the profession has folks and talents from all different backgrounds, so we'll have a number of things that'll come out from that. And I think the last couple slides, uh, the Agricultural Equipment Technology Conference we hold every year. The next one will be in Louisville. There are a number of things tied in with that that are specifically related to machinery. I've had several people tell me from countries around the world that that's been one of the most helpful things to get to know ASABE. And last slide, I think, is our upcoming annual meeting, and uh, this is going to be in Omaha, Nebraska. We're thrilled to have that in the, uh, the back, w back yard of uh, past president Maury Sauls. Kloss Manufacturing will have a major presence with the meeting. We also are going to tie a number of events in with the University of Nebraska, and down in the bottom corner, there'll be significant uh, activities going on uh, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the tractor test lab, the advancements in technology, where tractors uh, will be going in the future, and talking with the head of the lab, I gave him a bit of a heads up too, that it would be ideal if they could incorporate developing technology. What are those core things that could be adopted and plugged in appropriate? So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, if we have questions, one of the things we are trying to do, which Professor Olaoye, the desk officer for SAB has done, is to send messages across our platforms that for some of us coming in, we intend to be members of SAB. Uh, we pay the necessary fee and that will be done. Uh, while it's going, you can take those data and cash with them and that will be, your membership will be processed or if you are renewing your membership or you are paying your dues, that can also be done. We can take advantage of his presence uh, and get that done. Uh, having said that, we are, because of our time, we are moving to the last speaker, and um, uh, that will be rounded up by Professor Fabarode. Please let's put our hands together for Prof. Um, I, I, I surely feel there is not much, nothing left to say. <laughs> Everything that needs to be said has been said. And we don't have to be repeating ourselves. But I think this has been a very uh, wonderful conference, uh, you know, 2019. And as I said earlier, this is the 40th of our meetings and the 20th International Conference. I remember the International Conference started uh, the first one was in Enugu in 2001, and that was the year of 9-11. We were entering the hall for the conference when they struck. And those who were still upstairs could not come down again. And we just, those of us that were in the hall didn't know what was going on until during break time. So we have come a long way, but it's such a pity that we lost steam just like Nigeria itself lost him. The coming of oil changed the game for Nigeria. Agriculture became something that we didn't worry about again. And that was when the fortunes began to go down. And if people had known that that was how it was going to go, maybe they would have reversed it, but they thought it was going to affect only agriculture, they didn't know it was going to affect the whole economy. So if this economy is going to bounce back, it has to be on the back of agriculture. And that is the reason why this is a watershed event, because agriculture is coming back. We have suddenly realized that we can't do without agriculture, either for food or for industrial raw material, for agro industries, and so on and so forth. And the message that has cut across our sessions this morning and the keynote speech is that we have to modernize agriculture and we have to take it beyond the next level to a level that we cannot even foresee now because there are therein lies the future of Nigeria. Agriculture is not only just for food, but to transform the economy. The mistake that we have made to just jump with little agriculture that cannot feed industry and we went to services has led to very terrible structural damage for the economy. And that is what's why, why we have jobless growth. 
the growth that we record in those financial terms will have no meaning to the young graduates and people who are going about without jobs. So we have to reprogram this country so that the growth we are going to have will be smooth transition from agriculture to industry so that jobs can be created for the young world. So the other conclusion from our discussion here so far is that mechanization or put it generally, technology is the future of agriculture and the use. The problem is that the youth are not much interested today. And that is why if they must embrace agriculture, it must be not the whole and quarters agriculture that we are practicing, but that that will entice them, things that are going to interest them, and so on and so forth. So that is what um, we have got from all the speakers. And I'm very happy that we have not, just like we've done in the past, we are not, talk, we are not using just academics alone to discuss here. We have brought the president of FACAN. We have brought Niji, who has been very inspiring in the way he has gone about uh, for, for, I mean, for, I mean, prosecuting his life. When I gave the convocation lecture of Landmark about two months ago, I showed pictures of the tractors that he had produced, machines that he had produced. And I got in the door, do I wonder whether this was whether these ones were make in Nigeria or, or so, you know? And we are asked, just about now, governments have just signed an agreement to go and bring tractors and mechanize, even training. When Unkam is there and you, all of you professionals are there. So that is what we have to change. And as we have noted, we have a very big job to do to change perceptions, to change the way people understand what needs to be done. There are things that we, we Niji and others have said about some of the developments that are taking place in several places, in several research centers, in universities, things that have been produced that we don't allow to see the light of the day because lack of understanding. So these are the things that we have to change. You can see when President of Fakan was talking, when they were at Inkam, even the states that is hosting Inkam does not know some of the things that are happening right there. And for a long time in this country, IIT was doing a lot of work in agriculture. And it was not patronized by Nigerian entities, other governments, other states, or federal government until recently. So we need to be more vigorous in our advocacy in letting everybody know, as um, Engineer Ademilu said towards the end of that, I mean, first session, that we need to expose ourselves, we need to sing our praises, and we need to be very critical. If we know something is not being well done, let us say it. But when we have to sing our praises, let us let everybody know what we are able to do. And that is a practitioner, what he has also said, that they don't know a lot of the things that we have done or that we are doing. And it's counterproductive. People are not motivated, people are not encouraged. When you, talk to that, you think that you have done something and it's not appreciated. So NIAE, working with other bodies in the region, because we are going to revive Wasai to come back, and we are going to work with Pasai, that is the Pan-African Society for Agriculture and make sure that we take what rightly belongs to us in the continent, in the region, and nationally. There is so much going on. He has also mentioned the African Development Bank. There is the uh, uh, TAAT program on technology in agriculture. There is also the new one on the export processing zone, the SPZ. And he says, you can't see us there. You can't see, you can't, we, we are not even aware, so to say. These are things we must change. Low hanging fruits, we should go for them. And the same thing Niji also said, these are people who are right on the field. We have to move away from our comfort zones. Especially those of us who are in academic, those of us who are in the ministries. We must interact with the fields and know what is going on. 
and also work with extension so that our messages can get to the farmers, the processors, those that need our technologies and services. Technology is the way forward for agriculture, and we are the people to develop the technologies and to solve problems. That is something that also has been said over and over since morning. Our profession is to solve problems in agriculture, harnessing all the bodies of engineering knowledge and also some knowledge of economics, knowledge about plants, about crops, and so on. So, when you look at the subject for this year's the theme, it's innovations and technologies for sustainable agricultural mechanization and livestock transformation. Not just in itself, but for economic growth. And if you look inwards and you see the technical sessions, you will see that it covers all the broad spectrum of subjects in the economy. Soil and water is there, energy is there, waste management is there, processing, value chains, everything is there. So, we need to produce enough food. We are not producing enough now, so that's the first challenge. So, how do we enhance productivity? Mechanization, as we mentioned, irrigation, so that we can have multiple cropping in a year. Somebody mentioned Israel, turning deserts into very profitable arable lands. We can also do the same thing. Then it is almost a crime to lose almost half of what we produce, the little that we are producing, to allow it to go into spoilage. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like madness. So we must prevent food spoilage and food losses. That's the second greatest challenge. So you can see that all aspects of engineering are involved in this march forward that we are doing. And so we must use this to provide the leadership that is necessary. Let us throw away despondency and the ability, I mean, the, and the feeling that we cannot do something. We can do what we need to do. Let us be upbeat. And it also starts right from our students in the various so As they are coming in, let them have hope that this is a profession with which they can change the condition of the world. First of all, their own personal conditions. I feel very depressed when you talk about graduates without jobs, and an agric engineer is also counted. Even if it's a simple dryer you start with, <laughs> you can make a good living. And then, Nidia has talked about several opportunities that are begging to be exploited. So we have, we have no, no reason not to be very successful as professionals, as entrepreneurs, as businesses, and so on and so forth. I think that is the message that we have got. And I want to thank all our panel of speakers from the morning, the keynote speaker, and our colleagues who have come from India and from the United States to, if anything, to validate our feelings that what we are on the right path by committing ourselves to using our knowledge of engineering to change agriculture for the better of this country. If we need anybody to tell us that we are on the right path, we've had it today. So let us dedicate ourselves, let us continue to push ahead. The future is very bright for this profession. The future is bright for agriculture now, but it must not be agriculture of hoe and cutlasses, as has been said repeatedly, but agriculture that embraces modern technology and brings innovation and all these new technologies to bear on farming. That's what I want to say, and I hope that we continue in that spirit throughout the rest of this conference. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, we are rounding off. Uh, let me just attempt to give a summary. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Andramani talked about timeliness, what government needs to do, the need for government support, manufacturing technology, and uh, Professor Sunde went ahead to talk about the need to encourage youth to go into agriculture, 
And um, NIE has taken it upon herself to, one of the things we have done and in the last few conferences is to, to have student session. As we are talking, the student session is on, and um, we are sincerely grateful for the VC of Landmark. All the students that came in from around the country have been given free accommodation, and the conference fee has been so subsidized, so low, for them to participate, which is one of the things NIE has been driving at to encourage students, and we shall sustain this. Uh, Prince Bakari, representing FACAN, uh, talked about what's, what FACAN is doing and uh, the need to have our own grown technology, the need for policies to help National Center for Agri Mechanization and other similar bodies, and uh, the need to, to fight for what belongs to us. Then he dared to mention about the agri processing zones for which we are not involved. Uh, since we are here and the essence of his coming is to see the area of collaboration which we, we long for, uh, FACAN is a very big and powerful body in the country. They've been so recognized not just by the government but by USAID and uh, there's a group we are into and we're working together. The last time USAID gave funding, they gave to seven specific states and uh, we're trying to reduce post harvest losses in those states, and um, FACAN is one of the team. Uh, Adan is the other, the other group, and a few other groups involved. And uh, under these, permit me to say that those farmers groups, for example, Cassava Farmers Association, Rice Farmers Association, Shea Butter Association, and some other groups. In the last, w livestock, fish, and so on and so forth, one of the, the products that have given Nigeria so much money in the last one year, we talk about cocoa bean, fermented and non-fermented, sesame, shrimps, uh, cashew. They gave us so much income in the country. And this, this body, the bodies involved in all of this are getting stronger because they, they are not just exporting. Uh, the, the idea now is to look at the value chain, you know, to develop the crop along the value chain. I, I grew up to know that cocoa was produced. <laughs> and uh, over the years, we still export cocoa. But I think something more than that needs to be done to develop cocoa along the value chain. And the same thing is applicable. What need you look at done in terms of cassava uh, is, is to develop cassava in complete value chain, from production to processing to packaging. Uh, those of us who are at in his farm, we will see how Gary was packaged, direct from cassava raw cassava to washing to peeling to we saw all of that so cassava is almost like being taken care of but the challenge to us like he posed to us NIE is for us to see what we can do along that area then he mentioned something very germane and this has to do with discussion with central bank of nigeria where he's just inf he's informed us that there is what is called anchor borrowers program which NIE can be part of by letting them know that we are a major stakeholder. FACAN, he said, they are ready, they have made their feelings done and they, they are getting something done. But now that FACAN is there, I think one of the salient things that we've done before FACAN leaves, the leadership is there so for talk and uh, some other things. Um, thank you, Prince Bakari, for coming for on behalf of FACAN. Uh, Niji Lucas came, spoke, and challenged us on what he's doing and the need. He also mentioned something very important uh, I think to all of us, and the need for us to have a, a something like product development center, you know, which NIA can work together and, and get, there are several products we are ha having that are not being developed. Uh, can we, can we pack the package or package some of the, and develop them for us such that uh, this can be for export? It made reference to the fact that it's possible for us to have uh, Gary or, or Kasawa have a machine that develops just point onto this and this, can we process that and produce the food, which is a possibility. There are quite a number of uh, chap brilliant guys amongst us, I mean everybody here, that can get this done. And the uh, ASAB uh, talked about membership, I mean history took us down the memory of ASAB, the various global engagement that have um, started in the US, uh, which is all over the, the globe. I think that the various issues affecting uh, the world, basically we talk of energy, 
water and food under uh, a sustainable environment and climate change. That discussion started uh, sometime around 2014 uh, in, in Montreal, and that led us to the, the, the food conference in, in Stellenbosch, water conference in um, Hyderabad in India, and the, and the other conference coming up. I think what we need to do is just to see what we can do to be part of this global move so that we can get some of these, uh, provide solutions to myriad of, of these problems that are confronting us. And uh, Professor Farad has uh, summarized and rounded up for us. Uh, without much ado, I know some of us have questions. Maybe we'll just entertain one or two comments. And I will also want to crave the indulgence of our national chairman, maybe to say one or two things. Uh, uh, while, uh, are there questions, please? We'll just entertain maybe one, two, three, or comments so that um, while the chairman is, is giving us uh, a brief remark, we can also take advantage of those comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, thank you very much, the moderator. Um, much has been said this evening, and um, I think I would only use the opportunity to appreciate all the speakers for the contributions towards the development of uh, our institution, pointing at directions to which we should be focusing our minds to. Uh, because a lot of challenges have been identified. And we really need to sit down and look at these challenges and find ways in which we'll be able to put our expertise our knowledge into it and be able to make our contributions to national development. Like uh, Niji said, the issue sometimes is not only to make money, but also to contribute to development of society in which you live. And the agricultural engineers have all the potentials to make such contributions. Uh, our country is still uh, at the rudimentary stages of development to me. So we really need to focus on issues of rural development to ensure that our youth are properly employed. And the only way we can attract the youth to agriculture, which is a major employer of uh, labor, is that we have to really mechanize the process. There is no youth these days that would want to go and uh, make use of the whole that was uh, mentioned by uh, Edwin Macra. You will be, you'll be, you'll be on the field, you'll be leaning on your hoe, and you'll be looking up to see that the field is still there to be worked on. But if there are machines that will enable you to improve on your productivity, I think it will attract more and more youth into agriculture. And it will only be for the better for us in this country to ensure that we attract the youth because agriculture and agricultural mechanization is the only way for us to ensure that our society is food secure. Otherwise, you will be at the risk of what is happening globally. The, the, the world is now a global village. A small thing will happen somewhere and it will adversely affect you. So one of the challenges we have is we should collate all of these contributions that are being made today to ensure that we work out uh, a plan. I know that uh, Dr. Jones is here. We have been working on something we call the roadmap, and uh, I want, I'm even calling him uh, the road marshal. So I am sure he is listening, and all our members that are on that committee are listening and taking notes of some of the points that are being made, and we shall be able to incorporate some of this into the roadmap and be able to cooperate with government and all other agencies that are involved in agricultural development in this country to ensure that we give our own contributions and for the development of our country and the youth in general. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate all these contributions uh, from all the speakers and uh, we wish you all the best in all your other endeavors. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, National Chairman. 
Uh, just one or two contributions. Uh, Professor Wu, just briefly, and uh, Dr. Sati May, and the uh, Incomes Director. Just one, one minute, please, so that we can round off very quickly. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. I am, I'm not going to waste time. I just want to lay emphasis on the fact that, to me, we have to continue from where we stopped some years ago. That is, we, we all heard here that uh, people don't even know what agric engineering is all about. And I could remember some years ago, we started going from one state to the other. And those that were there at that time, when we got to Benue State, the lady, the, the woman commissioner of agriculture, when we met her, she was shocked. She said it openly. So agric engineers can do this. And I think she was told, get the agric engineers, and then you see what they will do. It was there she said that all agric engineering graduates in Benue State should be absorbed into uh, the civil service. Now, in Yope State, the same thing. And I knew even at that time, uh, NSC president, okay, had to invite us to, Ab to Abuja, and then, our, I mean, Lagos, querying why we were now doing the work of NSC. And I think I told him, uh, Greek engineering is different from all other engineering professions. And I said it, we have the record there. We were back to join NSC. So I just want us to make sure that we start now to start going around so that we don't, it's not just a question of talking. I'm very sorry. I am only asking ESCO to please, let's continue from where we stopped. And because of that, I know the sky is not just a limit. We're just going to start. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just uh, Dr. Satime, one minute, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. I just want to speak to what I call the lamentation of um, Professor Olanyaju when he was talking of um, not too many youths or candidates, you know, for university admission are interested in coming to the uh, Greek engineering profession. I just want to share this um, experience, this very, very brief experience with us in the university and uh, institutions. Some time ago, I uh, told my head of department at the Federal University of Agriculture in Makodi to go to our remedial class to sensitize students as to the importance of agri-engineering profession and to mobilize students, you know, prospective candidates into our department. It, it happened that it was just at the time they were filling their forms to indicate their preferences of choice of, you know, choice of courses. And for those that had not uh, indicated the courses they would want to go, the profession they want to pursue, they were very, very happy that we came. And very, very there and then, many of the, st of the students in the remedial classes indicated they would like to read a Greek engineering. So why I'm sharing this experience is that perhaps our professors, our colleagues in, in the academia can um, visit, do career talks to youths in the high, in the high schools um, secondary schools, remedial classes, you know, and stuff like that, so as to elicit the interest of our youths in the agro engineering profession. Thank you, Mr. Mojito. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can you help me out and over the microphone to E.D. Nkam? All protocol observed. I only want to react to the sensitization uh, that uh, Nkam, they said the Nkam have not been doing sensitization. Honestly, it's not that we are not trying we have been trying. And uh, even to say that Kuala State doesn't know that income is there, it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's not true. When, we, when we, I came on board, I wrote to the 36 governors in the, in the, in, of the Federation, and we made the follow-up. Only three states responded to our request. We, we wrote to them and gave them all what we are doing. All, only three states, Ogun State, Lagos State, and Ekiti State. Even Ogun State that re responded, we collaborated with them, even the auto, when, when Buhari wanted to, uh, President Buhari wanted to, uh, to, to visit uh, Ogun State, 
their rice, integrated rice complex, uh, we are the one who automated it. If, yes, we automated it to the extent that uh, the uh, president was impressed. Equity states, they, 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 though they responded, but when we went to them for meeting, they told us that uh, we, they cannot uh, go, uh, uh, work with us directly unless we go to the private sector. So they got state too, we went there twice, we had meeting with them. But what I just tried to say is that not that we are not trying, but uh, it's not as easy as people are saying. For example now, in Abuja last week when I, said I met the minister, we have been frustrated because we know that we are training youth in the country. We, we train youth on the fabrication of equipment, the web artisans, we trade and uh, use also in the integrated farming, which, we, we, which is a, a very good w uh, uh, integrated farming that can give maximum production. We trade use on tractor operation, uh, op 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 operation and maintenance. We trade use and women in agriculture on how to use cassava flour to make confectionaries. All this we are doing every year. And uh, most, the, 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 for example, the uh, Kuala State gov government, they wanted us to come and produce equipment for them and give them free of, free of charge. They want freebies. And which is not so, it's not possible. So we are on, on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we are, we are also on the, uh, WhatsApp. So it's not that we are not making, for example, now we wanted to go on here. We, we of, of recent, we have com uh, com uh, commentaries on, the, on television. We wanted to go on here too, but NTA, we are trying to talk with them. Most of them, somebody giving us bill of 18 million. As a government agency, where do we have? 18 million to, to pay just for uh, to, 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 to hear our, our programs. So that's what, uh, what I just want to say. But I want how the, the, the society, I mean the institution can make advocacy. We, for example now, if you can go to the Minister of uh, Agriculture, let him know. Because when I went there, I told him, please, I told Honorable Minister, sir, please I want you to give us challenges, uh, to give us prob uh, problem solving solutions uh, things that we can do. We give, said we, they should challenge us. If you challenge us, and let's see what you can do. So those are the things. I know that, for example now, I want to give what you have done in income now, that just of recent. The cassava planter, that the, you know the Brazilian cassava planter, you know there are two laborers, laborers that is uh, inputting the cassava steps to plant on two rows. We are trying now to, to make sure that we reduce the labor by using one person to, to plant two rows. So there are many innovations that we are doing. But by God, we have gone to many exhibitions and Get, getting up to three prizes that we are, we are the first that are, uh, we got uh, pri first prizes in those ex exhibitions, and every year we go to many exhibitions too. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the director of Uncam. Uh, a lot is being done, and a lot needs more to be done. Uh, the, all these um, suggestions and input, I think we'll just harvest all of them, and uh, the next we'll look at them and possibly look at a plan of action on what to do in order to move forward. Uh, having said this, uh, we'd like to thank all our um, discussants, Professor Mr. Sosunde, Dr. Ndramani, Professor Faborode, uh, Dr. Darren Drollinger, uh, Principal Kari Fakan, when you are sitting right close to, the, to our national chairman, so the discussion can continue after now, because we have to work together. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> the, the national chair, elders of the society, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the meeting continues tomorrow. We appreciate everyone for coming. And I think, uh, I'm sure the students will have had a good time with uh, Indra. Uh, uh, yes, he shared some of those things with us when we were coming. And I'm sure that um, uh, India is open for collaboration, not to escape to India and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> you go for your master's or PhD or, or training and come back home and use those training. Uh, thank you all for coming. The day is well spent. We have had a good time. And uh, tomorrow, I think the technical sessions that we invite uh, engineer Dr. Shola Ogunjirin to give us the brief for tomorrow uh, while we thank everyone for coming. Can we put our hands together for this panel of discussants and for everyone for your participation at this program? Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to sincerely appreciate us for being calm to the end of this program because we are to we all know that by 7 p.m. 
this evening, there is a there is a cock that has a tail that we must cut. So by seven. Oh, by seven. Uh, as that's as we are leaving, as we are leaving, we just walk straight to the cocktail and did the cutting before going back to rest. And tomorrow, at the exhibition, International Exhibition Center. Yes. Tomorrow, which opposite this building, just across. Mm. Tomorrow, we shall be having concurrent technical sessions from 9 o'clock in the morning. And please, we don't want to delay. And all presenters should come up quickly. All presenters should come up quickly with their PowerPoint and put into the systems in the uh, venue where they're going to do their presentation. The presentation rooms, the technical rooms are already prepared. And with, uh, yes, on this floor, on this floor, if you go out of this room, uh, this door, one, two, three, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, just across. And each room is already equipped with a, a PowerPoint presentation gadget. So, but get there. Make sure you insert your uh, presentation into the system because you, we don't want the system to be disturbed after the presentation, uh, presentation begins. So all papers will be presented tomorrow. And please, all chairmen of those technical sessions and rapporteurs, take notes so that and you are to submit reports to me immediately after you must have typed it. Just submit to me because we want to produce a comprehensive report for this conference. So on this note, in the absence of no other questions, I think we can go ahead to the cocktail, for the cocktail. Thank you. I don't want to percolate the crowd I just want to make you smile I don't care who thinks I'm right or wrong I don't care who tries to calm me down We want those that have not registered So please register the, you should come very early tomorrow morning for registration. Thank you. By 7.30. 8. Sorry, the registration point will be open by 7.30. Please try and come around to do your registration so that you can have the materials and flow along, please. You forget. for my name They don't have to walk me down the aisle I just wanna make you proud Should I make the Hall of Fame Or they save a special seat I just hope that you'll be pleased You cover me in the midst of it all You love me Gave me another chance You rescued me I was going to fall, going to fall You saved me So in my life I 
Attention, please. Please, everyone that wants to use the hostel for accommodation should go to Sarah Hall. Sarah Hall. Find your way to Sarah Hall, especially the students and those who want to use the hostel for students here. Please, Sarah Hall. You get the glory. You get the glory. Hello, hello, please, for some of the escorts that are going to the cafeteria to eat, NIAU does not provide feeding, NIA 